All right, here we are with the highly anticipated, frequently requested State of the Watch Collection video. We're gonna break it down into four different sections. First, what is still in the collection from last time. After that, we'll talk about what's gone and why I decided to get rid of those watches. Then we'll take a look at what's new in the collection. And finally, my wish list for the future. There's lots of changes, including what I really want to add to the collection, so be sure to stick around for that. All right, quick recap of what I still have in the collection from last time. Starting off with the Seiko 5 SNK 809, in my opinion, best bang for the buck watch, under $200. Next, Rolex Datejust, reference 116234, my first luxury watch purchase, and as a result, a very special watch for me. Another special watch here, Cartier Tank American, the watch my wife gave to me on our wedding day. Alaga and Zuna Datagraph, that's going nowhere. Uh, and just because, let's have some gratuitous shots of the case back. Also still in the collection, the Hoyer Carrera Limited Edition Blue Dreamer. This is number four of 100. The Workhorse IWC Ingenieur, and the Swatch System 51 Vintage 84. Now let's talk about what is not in the collection anymore. Obviously, the big one you already know about if you're a fan of the channel is the Patek Philippe Nautilus 5711. If you are just happening upon this video, uh, you can watch the entire video I did on why I decided to sell it, my complete thought process behind it, and how much I actually sold it for with the link right up there. Also gone from the collection is the Cartier Drive. I had one from the first year of production, stainless steel, black dial. It was a cool watch, I wore it, uh, but it was probably one of my least worn watches. 41 millimeters, so it was a little large for my wrist, which is six and a half inches. Uh, I also kind of struggled to find ways to style it. It seemed to require a very specific kind of outfit and it just didn't find a real permanent place in my watch rotation. Now this one might come as a big surprise to you, but uh, also gone from the collection is my 1977 Rolex GMT Master reference 1675. It was a special watch, it was a birthier watch, but I just sort of like had my time with it. I was wearing it less uh, and I found myself kind of enjoying looking at it more than actually wearing it. And I'm someone who likes to wear my watches, not just treat them as museum pieces that are viewed under a glass case. So because I was sort of tipping that way with this one, I decided to let it go. And I actually sold it to my friend Eric Wind from Wind Vintage. And I know the question everyone will have with this one, as well as the other two watches that I let go is, do I miss them? And actually the answer is no, I don't miss them at all. Not even one bit, so I feel pretty good about the decisions I made. When some doors close, others open, or when you finish a book, there's always the next book to read. And there are a few new additions in my watch collection, five to be exact. And now I'm gonna take you through what is new in the collection. Up first is maybe the most interesting edition, definitely very unique, and that is this letter opener by Cartier. It's a limited edition, actually. There were 2,000 of these made. I have number 1123. Very interesting elongated clock face. Reminds me very much of the Tank American. It is a quartz movement, but who cares? It's a really neat piece. As I said, it's very unique, though they are definitely out there to be had if you look. Uh, I found this one on eBay about six months ago, got it for a really good price, and based on what I see them going for now, it was kind of a steal. Next new addition to the collection is a pre-Bond Omega Seamaster. James Bond, of course, has worn a Seamaster since 1995, and because this one dates before 1995, that's why it's called a pre-Bond Seamaster. A lot of these tend to be quartz movements. However, this one is actually an automatic movement. It's got a look that's very similar to the Rolex Submariner, although the price is definitely much different. I really like the size of this watch. It's between 36 to 38 millimeters, so fits my wrist really well. Uh, and it has a really nice patina on the hour indices as well as all of the hands, which gives it a great kind of vintage look and feel. Another Omega addition to the collection, this one, a Speedmaster, the first Omega in space. This watch is one that I actually did a complete video for going through the process of actually buying it, unboxing, talking about why I thought I would never be a Speedmaster owner and what changed my mind and resulted in me purchasing this watch. That video is linked right up there in the right-hand corner if you want to get the complete story. Now, this is a watch that has quickly become one of my most worn watches on a day-to-day -day basis. It's just so versatile, looks great on a variety of different straps. 
I have been wearing it mostly on what you see here, which is a really nice brown suede strap. A few years ago, I had the opportunity to work with Vacheron Constantin on a campaign for the launch of their new 56 collection. I really fell in love with the brand at that time, and particularly the way that Vacheron kind of takes elegance and just goes like that extra little bit further. And this next watch that's new to the collection, which you've seen featured a lot in my outfit videos over the past year, is, in my opinion, such a great expression of that timeless elegance with a level of detail and subtlety that is just incredible. This is the Vacheron Constantin Traditionnel in pink gold. It's a 38 millimeter case, which in my opinion is just the perfect size. Uh, the case thickness is great too, 7.77 millimeters, so quite thin. Manually winding, brown alligator strap, see-through case back with an absolutely gorgeous movement, though the main attraction with this watch is the dial. Beautiful hour and minute hands, very elegantly placed small second style, and then of course the beautiful intricate guilloche. In many ways, this watch is a perfect encapsulation of my own personal style in that it's simple, elegant, timeless, and really pays attention to those small details, which elevates it from a beautiful watch to an incredibly beautiful watch. One of the things I said in my original watch collection video is that I needed to add more gold. And in addition to the Vacheron, I also have now a beautiful Jeger Lecoultre Reverso in pink gold. Now, if I had to pick two of my most favorite watch brands ever, it would be a tie uh, between Langa and JLC, and for the same exact reasons. They're both incredibly elegant, beautiful design, exquisite craftsmanship, and kind of like a real watch lover's watch brand. Somewhat under the radar, and if you know, you know. My Reverso is the medium size. I've tried the large size on, and for me, I feel the medium size is just a little bit better fit. It kind of wears more elegantly, in my opinion. It's got that great Art Deco look, and that's actually another thing that I really love about the Reverso model, in that its design really hasn't changed all that much from when it first appeared. I have it on the black alligator strap that it came on. Such a natural fit with a tuxedo or formal wear. And I'm actually planning on getting a brown strap for it soon, so I can wear it more easily on a day-to-day -day basis. That's what's new, but as anyone who gets into watches knows, there's always that next one that you are hoping to acquire. Uh, and with one notable exception, my wish list has changed pretty dramatically since last time. First and number one on my wish list is a Langa one in rose gold. I still think back to a few years ago when I had the opportunity to have one on my wrist for about a month. Such a perfect watch, in my opinion, from the size 38 and a half millimeter case to the quality of the craftsmanship and the finishing, and of course, that iconic and incredibly unique design of the dial. Next, the JLC Master Ultra Thin Perpetual Calendar in pink gold. When I went to London on a trip with JLC, I got to wear the steel version. And then when Robin and I visited the manufacturer last year, I had the opportunity to wear the pink gold version, and I just absolutely fell in love with it. 39 millimeters is a great size. It's timeless, but modern. I love the moon phase. Just a really beautiful watch that wears incredibly easily. Another one from JLC that really intrigues me and I would love to find at some point is a vintage Memovox. I'd love to grab one from the 50s or 60s. It's an alarm watch, which I think is so cool because we don't think of mechanical wristwatches these days as being used as alarms. And a vintage Memovox would be a really cool connection to a specific time in history. And then there is the watch that I am seriously kicking myself for not picking up like six to nine months ago, a Polar Dial Rolex Explorer 2. Seriously, like nine months ago, these things were going for around $5,000, and now they're in the seven to $9,000 range. It's such a great everyday watch. It's incredibly versatile. It's sporty. I like that it has a GMT complication. Uh, you know, if you're watching this and you're like, I want a nice watch too, but I don't want it to be a Rolex and I don't want to spend more than $3,000. There are actually a lot of great brands that fit that bill. And I put together a video that's right over there that will take you through five of my favorite picks.